In this video, we're going to take a look at the history of Python and how it compares to some other languages. So uh, we're going to we're going to start off with this video on YouTube. I turned the sound off just so I can talk over it a little bit, uh, but if in its double speed. But you can see here, you know, way back in the 60s, Fortran was obviously the most popular, but it starts to decline in popularity as time goes on. And then uh, as we get into the 70s, you're going to see some other languages start to pick up. So. Uh, we started introducing Pascal, and Pascal got pretty popular, and you know, BASIC became a pretty popular language in the 70s as well. Um, you see COBOL expanding, and you know, I know not long ago, uh, COBOL programmers were in pretty high demand because of uh, the whole unemployment system issues over the pandemic. And then once C is invented, you see C is going to rise pretty quickly. Um, you know, you get to 1980 or so, and then Pascal is really popular. C is growing in popularity, and you can kind of see C and Ada going back and forth. So Ada kind of drops off uh, here. You know, see C grows in popularity, gets more and more popular, and then C++ comes out, and you know, it's kind of not a remarkably different language. So between C and C++, uh, starting in the mid 80s into the uh, late 80s, you're gonna see those two just sort of take off and become the most popular thing that's out there. Uh, Pascal kind of just declined in popularity at that point, and uh, you know, Pascal was actually my first programming language, but uh, you see, like, eh, there's a lot of change here. A lot of uh, things have gotten popular, gotten less popular, and then you're seeing Visual Basic pop up, and Visual Basic was kind of amazing when it came out because it was very visual, and you could click and point and do all sorts of things. Then in the mid-90s, Java comes out, and you see Java just sort of explode. Java goes uh, on to become pretty popular pretty quickly, and then uh, into the 2000s, you see it just grow and grow in popularity. Um, and then, you know, you're going to see Python kind of come out. Python comes out in around the late 90s, and uh, Python isn't super popular when Python 1 is around, but then Python 2 comes out and it becomes more and more popular. Uh, you know, you got a couple of other things out there. you got JavaScript, uh, you know, always very popular since we started using it. PHP, which came out and then, you know, has declined in popularity from a lot of years since, probably because it's a garbage language. But, uh, you know, the, the other ones in here, like C Sharp, come out. C, Objective-C with iPhone applications became pretty popular. Uh, you know, but you see Python continuing to grow, and then uh, around the you know late to, late two uh, thousands into two thousand teens, uh, Python becomes more and more popular. And uh, I think over the last couple of years, you see Python just become more and more popular. And I think Python's probably the most popular language today. Um, you know, Fortran was really popular for a lot of years. Pascal was popular for a lot of years. C and C++ were popular for a lot of years. Java was number one for a couple of years. I think that uh, JavaScript is probably going to be the programming language of the future that you're going to see a lot. But I think for now, Python is kind of a, kind of the thing. You know, like I think Python is is definitely uh, a language that is used for a lot of purposes right now. So I think it's become very popular uh, in use across machine learning, web development, and a handful of other things as well. So, uh, you know, back in 89, Python 1 was released, and, you know, it took a long time for Python to actually go anywhere. Um, I remember, uh, I think I took an AI class in, uh, in around 2002. It was using Python, uh, Python 2 at that point, and it was still kind of an obscure thing. It didn't really perform super well in the 90s. Uh, you know, I think Python 2 probably improved quite a few things, and then, uh, you know, they came out with Python 3 in 2008. Um, it wasn't backwards compatible, and, uh, you know, Python Python 3 actually took a long time uh, to work uh, to work through and to, to kind of get the adoption. Um, I think uh, I used Python 2 up until probably 2017 or so. It was probably still the dominant uh, version of Python. Um, you know, when I started teaching this class in App Engine, you could do a lot of really cool things in the Python 2 version. Uh, but I think that ultimately they said we're gonna we're gonna terminate Python 2, we're gonna stop support of it. But it didn't really happen because a lot of people, a lot of companies, a lot of businesses, a lot of programmers just couldn't give it up. So uh, it took a couple of years after that before they finally said Python 2 is done. And uh, you know, just a few years ago, they they did I say like Python 2 is finished. Uh, you know, but now we're we're kind of on to Python 3, which does have some improvements on on Python 2. So, uh, but we're going to be focusing on the newest version of the language. So what is Python? Python is a scripting language. You know, we're working in scripts. We're not compiling Python. 
Uh, you know, there are a lot of other scripting languages that you can take a look at, like JavaScript or Perl, uh, but Python is a pretty effective and pretty powerful scripting language. Uh, it has meaningful white space, which basically means instead of like Java where you have curly braces to, or C++ where you have curly braces to delineate your sections, uh, Python actually use indent, uses indentation uh, to separate, you know, function bodies from function declarations and if else statements from, from the body of code inside. Uh, Python is interpreted. Um, you use the Python 3 interpreter. Uh, it executes without compilation. Now, Python is a multi-paradigm language, which basically means you can use it in a couple of different ways. It sort of adapts to your needs. It can be structured. It can be functional. Uh, you can have object-oriented Python. Um, you know, a lot of different ways to approach the Python language. Um, you know, I think one of the reasons why Python has become very popular is because the syntax is very terse. You can do things with just a few keystrokes. You know, the joke is always like a hello world program in Java is like 17 lines and probably about 450 uh, characters just to get started, whereas hello world in Python is one line and it's about uh, 25, you know, 20, 25 characters. So it is, it does have that big advantage in that, you know, you're able to do a lot of things with, with very little code in Python. And I think that's a, a pretty attractive feature of the language for a lot of people. So I'm going to focus on uh, Java here, you know, how Python compares to Java, as I'm sure that many of you are familiar with Java. So in Java, you have code separated into section using those curly braces. In Python, we use indentation. So typically, you know, I think that there's a, there's always the, the question of spaces versus tabs. I, I think it's pretty clear that uh, spaces won that battle. Uh, some people don't like to hear that. Some people think that tabs are still the king. But I think if you look at all the code out there on uh, any huge repository, you find most people use spaces and tabs is a, is a minority. So uh, I, I prefer spaces because I think it's just a little bit easier to keep it consistent. But uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. You're allowed to use spaces or tabs if you so prefer. Uh, now in Java, you use only double quotes to identify strings. In Python, you use single or double quotes for strings. Uh, this allows you to do things like insert apostrophes where you need to, um, but you know you still have escape characters as necessary. Java is a very verbose language. Python is a very terse language, as you can see here. And then uh, when we get into the different examples and we start working with it, I think you'll see that. And then uh, in Java, you know the naming convention uses camel casing, you know, like where we have a capital letter, but we put all the words together. And uh, in Python, your naming conventions typically use underscores. And you know, I used to when I started writing Python, I tried to write Python like Java code which you know, just kind of looks weird, I think, to a lot of other programmers. So generally speaking, it's good to follow the conventions of the language or the conventions of the group that you're working with, whether that's a company or you know, for whatever school purposes. Uh, in Java, your, uh, your variables are strongly typed. Uh, they're statically typed. In um, Python, they are dynamically typed and strongly typed. So in Java, you have to declare things as like an int or a boolean. In Python, uh, the, the type is inferred through the data that it, it uses. So this works a little bit better in, uh, in Python than it does in JavaScript. We'll, we'll see that coming up. Uh, in Java, we have uh, null for things that are not set, or we just sort of want to set that unset value. Uh, Python uses a keyword called none with a capital N, just like this. Uh, in Java, we declare variables with a type. In Python, we get our typing from the assignment, uh, you know, the value of the, the, vari or the variable contains. Uh, Java, we have the locally scoped variables. In Python, we have locally scoped variables. JavaScript gets really weird with variables. We'll get to that later in the semester. Um, in Java, we have static arrays. In Python, we use dynamic lists and tuples. Uh, Python uses dictionaries pretty extensively, uh, whereas Java, you know, if you're trying to put things into some type of uh, collection that allows you to look them up, you're going to use maps. So these are pretty similar, and you'll see that, you know, if you're used to Java, you'll see a lot of that as we get into the language. We usually use that contains, because in Java, everything is sort of object-oriented. You know, we have to have a method for everything, but Python has a few more keywords that are uh, useful. Uh, so, you know, in Python, you can use in, and then, uh, you know, you can see a little sample of how we work with uh, a, a list here or an array in Java. In Java, we would declare the int array uh, variable type, and then we'd actually create or inst instantiate as a new int of, of size 10. In Python, uh, you know, I don't know if there's a way to, to set the size of a list uh, to make it work like an array in Java. In uh, Python, you just create a list or you create an empty list. Uh, you know, you'd see both of these at certain points in Python, but these create a dynamic list that you can add to as necessary. 
Uh, like I said, Python's multi-paradigm. Java is pr pretty much exclusively object-oriented, though they did add a couple of things to make it a little bit more functional in later versions. Uh, in Python, you have dynamic objects. You can just throw uh, properties onto them as necessary. In Java, uh, it's a lot more difficult to do that. We typically define the objects ahead of time, and they're, they're a little bit more static and explicit. Uh, with Python, we have uh, kind of access control, sort of... Uh, let's say aspirational access control, whereas in Java, you know, you have the private, you have the protected keywords that allow you to uh, protect the data that's inside of your objects. So this sort of works as long as people aren't breaking the rules. And generally speaking, this is, uh, this is something that you don't want to adhere to the conventions. Um, Python doesn't allow method overloading. It uses optional or default parameters, and we'll get into that later in the semester as well. Uh, working with Python, we typically write py files .py, and then we run these using a Python 3 interpreter. Uh, we can also use the Python 3 interactive shell. Uh, we're going to start off learning Python using a bunch of Colab notebooks, and then you know we can also get into web applications. Uh, so if you have any questions, please add those to the discussion area, or you know just throw them into the YouTube page here. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, we'll see you again soon.